the following podcast will contain graphic, disgusting, crass, foul, mature, and immature content. This is Colvic Darksy. I'm a half orc cleric. I'm really into CrossFit and spreading my dark seed. Shakes. I am Melvin Hardy. I am a high elf wizard. Unfortunately, sometimes I turn people inside out. Task cobble. I drink to forget and I fuck to remember. Previously on the very good adventuring team. It is a all black slammer with a white combat knife painted on it. <laughs> oh man. That's so lame, it must be savings. It's so douchey. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty lucky tonight, Clara, so we're gonna go with, uh, I slam it down on the table. Me lucky charms. And you look down and you can see he's wearing the pants that you lost to him. <laughs> First I lost me lucky charms. <laughs> well, they're always after them. <laughs> You came all this way, what else do you have? Oh, which is the one with all the boobies on it for all three pairs of your pants? Does she want to choose? Does she want the douchey deep cut back? Or she, nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. <laughs> so I'm actually going to keep this for <laughs> safekeeping. He sat in that soup while we fought some arcs. <laughs> so, good point. I love how Robert's so prevalent in this game. Just pooping and reading. Yeah, I'm gonna cast Ray Perkins. You extend your finger guns towards a creature you can see within range and fire a ray of brown lightning at them. I've got pink eye and I shit my pants. Pink eye, brown pants, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stab at his shame filled pants so yes on a tie the attacker wins so that morning star is going to connect nine piercing damage for you Kolvik <clears throat> red hat red hat it's going to keep on attacking Roscoe in front of him with his morning star 12 I'm guessing is a miss that misses and it returns back to Melvin I'm not going to repeat the Ray of Perkins spell, um, but I will MVP cast Firebolt at these guys. Firebolt. Right, one of them. Firebolt. Pink Eye or Red Hat? Uh, I'm trying to get rid of Pink Eye if I can. <laughs> <laughs> you and a lot of people, man. Annoying, yeah. annoying Pink Eye. 22 on Pink Eye is definitely a hit. That's going to be nine fire damage for Pink Eye. I feel like uh, Melvin has OCD towards like enemies. Like first it was Burger Guy, now it's Pink Guy. He's like he has to kill this guy, or you know, it's good to focus fire, right? That's a that's a good tactical decision. Yeah, yeah. Kolvik, now you can decide if you will focus fire. Pink Guy and Red Hat stand before you. Well, I wasn't sure what was before us, but I'm really getting upset at these guys because I've missed them twice. So I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, do an inflict wounds on this guy. Inflict those wounds. Yep. For what kind of wounds are you going to inflict? That's a dark spell for a holy man. Mm -hmm. It is, but I'm getting so far grayer and darker as we speak. 25 is definitely a hit. I'm sorry, which one did you specify? Pink eye? Pink eye. Yeah. And so actually I think that might have been the damage. Make uh, no, even. that's the attack roll. Click on the words inflict wounds. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. And uh, 3d10. 
Jesus, 3D10, really? Yeah. Awesome. Did you click it? It's just not coming through for me? Yeah. Uh, actually, I clicked it a few times, so we're going to have to do this old school. And actually use dice. Four, seven. Ouch, god damn it. Total of seven damage gets pink eye down to wrecked. Wrecked. Yeah, that was a lot less cool than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> 3D10, man, it, it could have turned out to be more than that, but as it is, Roscoe, it is returned to your turn. All right, I'm gonna keep plugging away at pink eye. Plugging uh, away at pink eye. Sneak attacking pink eye, because he's in close proximity to Colvick. Mm-hmm. 25, for sure a hit. So, 10 plus 3d6. You don't even have to roll the rest of those. Pink Eye is destroyed. Pink Eye goes down. Uh, did you want to move or anything else? Um, no. All right, Red Hat, the sole remaining combatant in this combat. Uh, all right, so Red Hat is going to is going to attack Kolvik this time with his big bad Morning Star. Twenty-seven. That's got to be a hit. Yes, it is. Man, how is that not a crit? That's going to be 17 piercing damage for you. Man. Melvin, back to you. This guy's pretty... Is he wrecked? He's bloodied, not wrecked. How's everybody else doing? Uh, pretty hurt, but I can do something about it. Do what you need to do, man. Yeah. Do what you need to do. I'm all right. I'm just thinking about how much my wad to blow on this guy, so... Go ahead. Am I just blowing my wad? Yeah. Okay. We both have turns after yours. Sure, we can riggedy wreck him. Mm hmm. Riggedy riggedy wreck, son. <laughs> Blowing my wad. I'm gonna cast Lightning Bolt. Yes. Blow it. Lightning Bolt is a dexterity save. Good luck, buddy. That is definitely a failed dexterity save. Ha <laughs> ha. 31 points of lightning damage arc out from your extended finger guns. Red hat jiggles and vibrates so much that that red make and and great again hat falls to the ground. <laughs> oh no. Followed very closely behind by a crispy, disgusting bugbear, and you have exited combat. Woo! Woo -woo. So you plowed your way through a bunch of bugbears and you begin approaching the tower itself. From a distance, you can see this tower is probably 80 feet tall, made of common gray field stone. It's got a red tiled roof. Yeah, there's a single door at the bottom and a couple of windows ringed around the top just underneath the roof. Probably about 30 feet diameter at the base and about 25 uh, tapers to about 25 feet towards the top. And it's just kind of hanging out there in the middle of a field on a, on a gentle sloping rise. And it looks pretty quiet, looks pretty abandoned. Um, it's getting to be noon just a little bit after. And here you guys are, slightly damaged from combat, but approaching your destination. How would you like to proceed? Should we take some kind of rest and be at full power? Well, I'm all for that. Yeah, same. I'm currently at Does five he... hit points. So Yeah. Does the environment look suitable? Right now, you guys are in a fairly open field. You can't see anything in any direction, but you do have pretty good visibility in all directions. Do you want to take a short rest or a long well, rest? Well, what's the time of day? Uh, it's just a little bit afternoon. Midday, we'll uh, say. And the, it's eight hours rest. Well, actually, it might not be too bad to attack the thing at night. I'm not sure at an abandoned house whether it really matter, but yeah, let's take a long rest. Okay. Okay. Long rest away. You guys can see clearly in all directions. Like I said, you're, you're not terribly far outside of a town at this point. Obviously not so far out that you're not getting ambushed by bugbears and shit like that, but you have yourself a nice, calm, peaceful rest, enough that you can recover everything you need to recover, hit points, spell slots, etc. I'm going to look towards a Roscoe, who might be the rogue. I'm like, do you have a, a grappling hook or something you can shoot? I mean, if there's windows above us, why try to go up a tower? Yeah, Roscoe. Got any tricks up your sleeve? Master thief. Hmm. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. 
All right, so you guys are outside. You you kind of make camp at the base of this tower. You've gone through a long rest. It's getting to be starting to... The, the sun is starting to set by this point, about roughly 8, 9 o'clock in the evening. What do you want to do? Roscoe apparently has jack shit to contribute in this yeah, situation. Yeah, I mean, so. like, doing the work. I'm, I'm just like... <laughs> Great plan, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm scratching my head. Uh, Let's start by just trying the front door. Uh, should, we, should we just knock? Uh, mm-hmm. okay. Why knock? Is that... Uh, you, I mean, you know for absolute certainty he's dead and there's nobody else living in there. Hey, buddy. You alive in there? We could knock, too, I guess. All right, let's knock, wise ass. Melvin knocks on the front door as Roscoe is yelling, hey, buddy, up to the upper windows. You get nothing but uh, the distant chirping of summer crickets in the background to answer your various calls. Okay. From experience, I just look at Roscoe and say, no, no traps? Hmm. Just because nobody, nobody come here, no traps? What do I know about traps? <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez, Rick, what do I know about knowing stuff? All right, I'm checking for traps. All right, you check for traps. Roll a d20. Add your investigation. 17 plus 5 for 22. 22, you are very confident that this door is not trapped. All right, so I try the handle. You try the handle, and the door swings open and free. As the door swings open, hey. <laughs> you see, hey. as the door swings open, you see three corpses in front of you on the ground, surrounded by what looked to very obviously be blood stains. One of them is wearing wizard robes, and is definitely the oldest of the three corpses, has been there for quite some time. The other two look relatively newer, both... Uh, If you had to guess, you'd say less than, or all three of these, rather, I should say, are less than five years old. You can say for certain that these people all fell to their death. And it's at that point that you look up and you see that this tower is essentially hollow all the way up to the top. There's some bookshelves and some other random things lining the walls going up. But about 60 feet above you, you can see a platform that looks like it's basically just hovering there. There's no stairs, there's no fire pole, there's no ropes, there's no anything. There's just three people that fell to their death from this great height above you. No ladder? Nope, no ladder. So... Neither of wood, metal, or rope. Are the wizard robes on the dead wizard nice? Not anymore. Um, well, do you? Hmm? It's so hard to go out of character, because my character is dumb as shit, so... (laughs) Are there any, like, baseballs or anything lying about? (laughs) Baseballs? (laughs) There's no baseball, but there is a catcher's mitt. (laughs) No, there are no sporting supplies anywhere in the immediate area. Well, but I mean, um, can I ask you, are there any iPhones or anything like that? (laughs) There's, I mean, no iPhones whatsoever. You have um, no model or year. Mage hand, right? Yeah, I do. How far does Mei Chan go up? Mei Chan goes about 30 feet up. Okay, so not all the way. Gets you about halfway there. Okay. Mei Chan goes about 30 feet. About 30 feet According up. to okay. my documentation. Yeah, good documentation. If only we had some kind of knob or no. anything to manipulate a crank to turn. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I think we have a rogue to investigate. Do you think things? I, do you think wizards masturbate with a mage hand? <laughs> we've we've covered this. I don't know what that is. <laughs> we've covered this. It's uh like I can make a magical hand appear and do things. <laughs> For sure, you could beat up. <laughs> Still funny though. But that's not a matter of if if I could. It's would I? <laughs> you like, scientists, <laughs> you never asked yourself if you should. <laughs> Like right now in this scenario, you're saying like when I just whip out a hand and just, start masturbating. Yeah. <laughs> you look over and Melvin's wizard robes are just like. He's just thinking too. He's like, huh? And he's like, wizard hand just masturbating. He's like, Christ. That's not canon. That's not happening. What am I doing right now? I'm asking if other wizards would do this. Oh, asking for a friend. Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody have any rope? Yeah, we all. We all have rope. I believe you guys all have adventuring packs, which would contain 50 feet of hemp and rope. I also have some ink and a pen and a crowbar. Would you like to investigate around? 
like this bottom floor? Yeah. Yeah, I'll take a look around. All right, so you investigate around the bottom floor. I'm not even going to make you roll for it because the, the three corpses that are there are about all you can see. The shelves and other things don't start for about 30, 35 feet up. I want to search the corpses. Do they have anything of interest on them? Searching through the corpses, you find a variety of adventuring gear. Most of it matches what, you are, what you're already carrying. There's nothing of additional value that you'd want to grab. Any talismans? <laughs> there just happens to be a small talisman of some renown wrapped in a bull testicle sack. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> it doesn't appear to be of any value, but if you would like to keep a talisman. Wait, so how big say... is the platform up there? Like, it's inside the tube, like it's floating freely? It's, or it's, a... it's floating freely. Uh, it appears from where you are to be floating freely in the center. The tower itself has about a 25 foot diameter up at that level and the platform that is floating in the middle of it is about 20 feet. So two and a half feet around the edge. Yeah, roughly. Uh, so we can't a see what's a on little, the A little more than that, like enough that you can comfortably pass through it. You said the bookshelf is 30 feet up? Uh, how tall? Starting at about 30 feet. There's just miscellaneous shelves aligning around the tower. Well, and they're, 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 the, the, pla- the platform is 60 feet up? Yes. So I have a spell, Levitate. So if we can climb on top of these shelves, I can levitate. 500 pounds up to 20 feet. And then May Chan maybe from there? And I don't know. At that point, we have rope. Can we... What if I shoot an arrow? Try to do a rope up to this platform. Why didn't you do that outside? I mean, you can... Do, you want to do that now? Because I don't show rope in my pack, but... You can have my rope. You and... should have rope. Because you part of what gets picked at the beginning is either an adventurer's pack or a dungeoneer's pack, if I recall. Mm-hmm. Rope would be in either one. I don't think so, that actually works. I don't think you can just shoot an arrow with like 100 pounds of, or like 10 pounds of rope on it. Wow, how high up is the platform? 60 feet, I thought. The yeah, platform it's itself is pounds. 60. Uh, the the lowest shelving that you can reach is, not that you can reach, but the lowest shelving is about 30 feet up. Well, I'm just curious why these people are dead down below and well, like they fell to the death. There's, and, I, and I can answer that pretty easily for you here, is that they tried getting up to the... The wizard you don't know, but the two adventurers, you can guess that they tried getting up to that platform and they so fell said, to their death. So it's 60 Fuck feet. This. I, can, I can just uh, teleport up there. If you get me to the top of the bookshelves, I can misty step 30 feet away from that and get up to that. Okay, so yeah, we'll do like a step on step. So like, well, I, no, right, no, on. if we can get up there... How many times can you misty step? Well, I can actually, I can do that like three times, but I guess more importantly, I can do that uh, up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space that I can see. But you can see towards that window space, right? I mean, there's windows, so you can do towards on can that I, window. Can I fit into a, a uh, one of these windows? Mm-hmm. The windows are way, way up though, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, uh, how high up are they? So the total tower is about 80 feet tall, and that's all the way up to the pinnacle of it. The roof is roughly 15 feet of that. So at about 65 feet up, you can see windows that, yes, a Melvin could fit through. Uh, They are glass windows, and they are currently closed. Not exactly an unoccupied space. No, that, no, there's, no, a, there's a bit of a ledge there. If you wanted to, yeah, if you wanted to try and Not get to that, that, there'd be I just a roll. I bet Roscoe with his fucking bow and arrow, because he's awesome, can hit a glass window. Or we can shoot something at it. But I think if we get on those shelvings, you can misty step up there. That's a great idea. Yeah. All right, well, if we burn the tower down and comb through the wreckage. But we don't know what, I mean... It's made out of... I mean, probably Stone, but... Strike it with lightning? I mean, that's an idea. Sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all, all in favor of I can see how much but... you approve of that idea. That's <laughs> <laughs> management, taking everything in, analyzing. It's pretty good. So how high up do you got to get to miss this step to these windows? I got to get 30 feet away. And so these shelves go 30 feet. And that platform's 60 feet. So that would be right on the edge of my ability to do this. All right, what if we tie a rope to an arrow, shoot it to one of the shelves, you climb up to the first bookshelf and see what you can do from there. I mean, can I just climb up these bookshelves? Do I need an arrow or a rope or anything? You're going to need some kind of rope because it's a relatively sheer and tapered inward uh, surface to get up to those first bookshelves. That negative incline. And the shelves start about 30 feet up, he said. 
All right. I mean, because this is old timey construction. It's like the way they used to build old buildings, where like you know, shit was a little thicker at the bottom, and all it always had to kind of taper in to make a taller building. All right. That's what we're dealing with here. All right, Roscoe. All right. I tie her up to my arrow and I shoot it at one of the most accessible bookshelves. All right. So I'm going to introduce a mechanic here that uh, isn't necessarily a fifth edition thing, but is like a. I mean, it's just a general make role playing fucking easier thing. Uh, I believe it's referred to as Take 20, where I could make you make some kind of a skill check or whatever about this, but because you have essentially have infinite time to complete this, not counting like you know, starvation and dehydration. Uh, you've got long enough to make this happen. So you sink an arrow with your rope into this bookshelf that's about 30 feet up. You get it into a nice meaty wooden part, and you've got an arrow stuck into that wood. And there you be. Well, are we all going up? No, just you. Just me? I'll go up. All right. At the same time? No, just me. And then I'll look around. Is there anything of value? I'm looking around, investigating. Do, you have, right. do we have more rope? Mm, you guys each should have 50 feet of rope. Yeah. All right. So, Roscoe, Seven. what I'm going to have you do is make a athletics check. Make an athletics check. 13. 13. 13 is enough to shimmy up, the, up there successfully. Uh, so you're now clinging to the side of the wall here. Now, imagine the scene, which is you are, you've managed to make your way up to this bookshelf, but it's a bookshelf that's really tightly set to the wall. So you've only got about a foot worth of platform and most of that is occupied by books and it's tilted a little bit backwards. So you're clinging on just a little bit precariously. Um, all you can see at this point are the bookshelves uh, in front of you. There's a couple more shelves that are around you in the, in the surrounding area. There's nothing of, of value or interest to you. It's just wizard books and diaries and good housekeeping magazines and whatnot. I'm going to yell at you from out of Let me do this. I can make it. All right. Are you going to shimmy up as well? Yep. All right. Athletics check. 17 plus 6, 24. All right. So now you're huddled up on this shelf as well. Actually, 23, by the way. But 23. Yes. That's, yeah, you climb up with absolute grace and ease. Mm -hmm. And now you're up there on this bookshelf mm -hmm. with Roscoe. Feeling pretty confident in my athletics. Is it my turn? If you so choose. Well, the, um, well, with These both fuckers, of us. Well, with both of us. <laughs> take the rope. I can well, leave no, them there. No, no, no. With both of us on, is the bookshelf holding? I mean, is it bending at all? Or? That's a great question. It's holding right it's holding, now. I mean, is it, I mean, is it bending, though? Is it, I mean, like, when we're both on it, me and Roscoe, is it's it? It's sagging a little bit. I mean, you're talking about what? Combined weight of about 300 pounds right now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah guys, that's why I'm asking. Like, can you guys spread out a little bit? No. Distribute the weight. <laughs> I mean, you, these, yep. these bookcases go all the way around. Well, I'm going to hold on to the rope and just kind of, like, lean on just just in case. But I'm just kind of holding on and waiting for... You're, you're securing that rope? Yep, securing it. Really just... glad that you did that because there was going to be a check involved. Yep. Um, so these bookshelves are... They look like they're straining just a little bit, but they're going to be able to take another person's worth of weight. The rope itself, which had been stressed by two people climbing up, not as stressed anymore now that Kolvik's holding on to it. Not the rope, but the arrow that's okay. securing it okay, in, okay. I mean. Because this is just like an arrow. No, yeah, you yeah, you're right. That's what I'm asking. Like, I'm scared. It's fairly generous by saying you guys could climb up with an arrow, like, thunked into a little bit of wood. Thunk. Well, I, I figured, like, we went up, he went to the side, I went up kind of thing, so it wouldn't be, but... So you're hanging on to this rope now, um, and you guys, like, floor level is about 30 feet for you at this point. Now, Melvin can take his turn to climb up. Before I do, is there anything that's to secure this rope to up there that you guys see at all? Nothing? Nothing but books and shelves. Yeah. Okay. All right. No fixtures, no, like, lantern hangings, etc. I'm coming up. I got five. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually a really good failure roll uh you make it a couple of feet up and then like just slide back down oh, my hands <laughs> <laughs> you only made it a couple of feet up before you kind of slid back down though can i try again you can try again that's better all I, right uh, i get really angry and i roll a 19 
So you make your way up to the bookshelf. You are now, all three of you, clinging to the side of this wall on this bookshelf that's probably, let's call it 15 feet wide, a couple of shelves tall. And there you be. You're, you're all hanging out. The bookshelf doesn't seem like it's doing great, but it doesn't seem like it's about to break at this point. Do we see anything more from this vantage point? Uh, from this vantage point, actually, because you're tight to the wall and you're a little higher up, what you can see that's slightly different is that the you can see a little bit up over the ledge of where this platform is. You can see that it is, is not, in fact, hovering there. It's just sort of, uh, it's, it's like hanging by chains from the rooftop. Mm. Okay. So, so there's see... no magical craziness going on or anything, but you can see a clear path to the up into that space. Do I see anything else? Like, are there any tall items that I can see protruding from the top of this platform or anything like that? Or do I just see the chains? Not from where you Suspending are. Suspending it, okay. Yeah, it seems like the edge itself is is a clear spot. Um, all right, so now we have two choices. One, I either missy step up to one of those window ledges, or I can levitate one of you guys to get up within 10 feet of that ledge. I have pretty good athletics. If you want to do me, I can maybe misty step and then jump up. That's a possibility. There's nothing solid for you to jump up from misty step. Or, no. or from levitation. That's like okay. like your... It's and not you, like there's a platform that forms under you that you can kick okay. off from. You're just being levitated as a body. And you can't misty step towards that chain since you see it? No, I could. I could do that. That's I probably pretty, wouldn't... I don't know if I'd go towards the chains, but I would... Well, I mean, if you do the chains and hold on to it, I mean, like, if you can... If that's a possibility, hold on to it and, like, drop a rope to us. Well, how far is the window from the platform? Uh, the platform and the windows are about level with each other, mm -hmm. and they're probably, let's call it, they're from the window at the wall's edge to the platform is about five feet. Oh, so I can probably wall. jump that or, yeah, basically I'm just saying probably shoot for the window first. Yep. In okay. case whatever is up there is pushing people off. Then yeah. yeah. I guess is that wizard summoned something in the... Not a bad idea. All right. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to miss you step to a window ledge. Bye, guys. <laughs> you die. <laughs> no explanation. You never know why. You just you're just dead now. He just passes us screaming. <laughs> <laughs> you successfully misty step up to the ledge, and you're now in the window. The window sill itself is about four feet by seven feet. Let's say four feet wide, seven feet tall. Okay. So you get in there. And you slap your hands to the sides and hold yourself in, and then very carefully kind of turn yourself around and slap your hands to the sides again. You can see your crew members down below expectantly staring up at you, and then you look over to the platform. It does not contain any monsters pushing people off, which is a wonderful thing. You see a bed and a large table and some chests and things like that, various personal accoutrements, uh, and a th Thin layer of dust over everything. Even what about on the floor? Yep, the floor, same thing. The f you're talking about the surface of the platform, right? Yeah. Yep, just layer of dust. That's about the only thing you see. So I don't see any. Doesn't look like anybody has disturbed anything here in, recently in several years. Hmm. So what do you think these other assholes did? You think they climbed to the top of this thing and fell off the bookshelf? From what you can now see, based on the mm -hmm. fact that you can see that layer of dust and everything else, I, I suppose I could make you do like a perception or insight roll, but basically those other two Hanyaks that were down at the bottom tried climbing up to the top and did not succeed. Well, um... I mean, the, you're on your own up there. Yeah. Unless you're yelling at us. So I'm going to cast Levitate on myself. Okay. Ooh, nice. Um, and then I'm just going to... Because you can't jump five feet. Well... <laughs> Have you seen my rolls today? It's probably not a good idea for me to take a chance on jumping five fucking feet. I, as a IRL human being, don't think I would take a chance on a five foot jump with a eighty or sixty foot drop beneath me. Right. Granted, I am not a professional adventurer, but I got spells. Let's That's use true. Them. You could slip or whatever. Why take the chance? Right. Anything yeah. could happen. Anything. You could roll a one. <laughs> <laughs> so, IRL roll a one. Uh huh. So you cast Levitate on yourself, hover over to the platform, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. You levitate over to the platform, gracefully set down, a wisp of dust poofs out around your feet, and you are successfully at the top of the platform. All right. I look over. 
Hey guys, I'm up here. Pretty sweet. <laughs> what about us? Do a rope. What about you? <laughs> so is it just you said a glass window, over, right? Hmm. Just a glass window, right? Yeah. There's. Uh, yeah. Let's say there's like ten glass windows, kind of mm -hmm. going around, uh, set into the okay. stonework, and well, he had stepped into one of them. Ask me, Kolvik. Uh. What do you want? Yeah, you guys are just hanging on like a bunch of six-year-olds up on the bookshelves, like yeah, not just quite sure where looking, to go next. Looking above, you're like, uh. Well, I just yelled out, I'm like, there's not much up here. There's just a bed and some dust and whatever else. A night table. A night. The table. Mm. And well, the, the table's covered with all kinds of stuff. You just haven't been close enough mm -hmm. to investigate it yet. So, okay. So I'm what gonna look it? through it. I mean, do you guys really want up or or what? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was that was a rhetorical question. Hello to all of you wonderful listeners. Are you enjoying listening to these Jamokes struggle to get up the side of this tower? I will admit that I was. This was one of the first times I've ever written an encounter for my adventurers that I didn't have a solution for. I literally just put an obstacle in their way and let them figure it out. What a hoot. I probably shouldn't have done that, but it was fun. As I'm editing this episode, I realized I had cut out a joke, so there's a bunch of stuff that probably doesn't make sense here. We had looked up the possibility of getting a dice bag, or really any bag, made from the scrotum of an animal. I really want to justify to you why that was happening, but if you've been listening this long, I think you know us well enough by now. We found a website that offered the manufacture of bags made from scrotums of a variety of animals. In their advertising material, they mentioned a variety of uses for their bags, most notably including holding talismans. We laughed our asses off for a few minutes at that, and it became a running gag for the rest of the session. So that's why you hear us mentioning talismans so many times. Glad I could clear that up for you. A very happy shout-out this week to Nick and Vince. Not only did these folks give us a five-star review and comment on iTunes, which is the coolest thing you can do on the planet, but then I found out they have a podcast of their own. They are, in fact, titled Nick and Vince's Podcast. I took a listen, and these dudes are super funny. They talk about just about everything, and I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Give them a listen if you get a chance. Speaking of that, if you've got time to leave us a review on iTunes, that would be fantastic. It's crazy how much that impacts new people finding the show. If you're a super mega supportive person and want to donate to keeping the show alive, there's always Patreon, too. I'm still trying to figure out a good way to set up one-time donations since PayPal is being a real bugger. I'll let you know when I figure that out. We also keep up the tweets and pretty much all the social medias just rolling with the updates. You can find links to all of that stuff on our website at thevgat.com. That's thevgat.com. It's pretty much just a pile of links taking you elsewhere, but it's still pretty cool to check out. Finally, a huge, huge thank you for everyone who has already reviewed, donated, or helped spread the word about this show. I'm recording this at the end of January, and we have had by far our best week of downloads. It looks like a bunch of new people must have found out about us. I really don't know exactly how or why, but we are continuing to grow. That is all because of you. Now get on back to that episode. You deserve it. You're just going to leave him down there? Well, yeah. What the hell how the fuck am I supposed to get him up here? Jim? Drop a rope down to us. Well, I mean, what's he going to hang it on to, I guess? One of the chains? I can turn, turn on the chains. Oh, but is, missed, it gonna hang, to the is it going to hang close enough for where you guys can actually get it? You'll have to jump, like, the platform's five feet away from... Like the... I said, he, he's not at the chains yet. And so it's going to be further for you to get to it than it is for... All right, here's what we can do. All right, I'm going to tie a rope to one of the chains in the corners. I'm going to throw it down. And uh, I'm going to use Mage Hand to move it to where they can get it. But I don't know how they're going to do this, because you're both going to have to, like, both grab it at the same time or some shit. So, you're still at the windowsill, right? No, I'm no, on the he's platform. on the platform. Okay. He levitated to the platform. 
Oh, I, I, I missed that part. I'm sorry. And so a rope is tied to the chain and down to us? He's yeah. now tied a rope. I'm assuming you guys used Roscoe's rope to yeah. get to the bookshelf. Yeah. And each of you has rope. So you're using Melvin's rope. Melvin is using Melvin's rope. Okay. Tied to the chain that's holding up. One of the chains holding up the platform. Right. The thing is, like, this tower is tapered towards the top, so it's going to go straight down. Yep. And But you're, like, way over here against the wall. It's not that tapered. Taper is, like, five feet from top to bottom. Okay. Whatever. But How about you're this? also using your mage hand to push it over. So yeah. do you guys, so the the rope moves over. Are you guys both going to try and grab at it? Or are you going to do it one at a time? Well, I mean, yeah, jumping towards it, right? It'll be within your reach. You don't have to jump for the rope itself. Yeah, you just I'm have gonna, to climb the remaining 30 feet I'm up gonna the top. Cl- I'm going to climb it myself, yes. All right. So you grab onto the rope first, taking that initiative. I'll have you make a athletics check. Okay. Let me go ahead and uh, pull that real quick. We should have. Okay. Jumped in the portable hole and just had Melvin carry it up. <laughs> Is that that's your athletics roll there? Um, yes. The critical fail that I see in the was it? Oh, uh, I cannot see the chat. All right, so you reach out, you grab onto the rope. Oh no! You oh. slide down the rope. You just can't quite get a grip on it. That gets you to within about ten feet of the floor, and then you drop off the bottom of it. You don't take any damage from it but you are now laying on your oh. ass on the ground. Oh. Wow. Bummer. Yeah, I should have actually rolled that one. Sucks, bro. You're on the floor. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the rope is still over there and available yep. for Roscoe yep. if Roscoe would like to take his attempt at the rope. You're not going to see... Goddamn right. Yep. You're not going to see any of the cool stuff we're going to see. You're right. Wow, that was... There's so much cool stuff up here. <laughs> okay, not to, not to get roll 20 against us, but... I got a one plus six. Mm-hmm. Wow. Critical fail is... <laughs> so it's not a critical fail, uh, Roscoe, but you uh, you got a four there, so yeah. you didn't do a whole heck of a lot better. You no. slide down. You don't fall off the bottom edge of the rope, but you slide all the way to the end of it. You're just hanging on. Lift me right... up. Yep. <laughs> how, late, how far away is it from where I am? So you're on your ass right now. Yep. And how tall are you again? No, no. It doesn't matter. I'm on my ass. I have to. No, it's not going to work. How tall are you, Roscoe? Oh, like six foot two. You're so... All right. So four feet above you laying on the ground right now are Roscoe's dangling legs. I mean, I can do it, but I feel on my ass was critical. Can I, can I get up from that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like okay, I yeah. said, you didn't take any damage from this, uh-huh. but you're just now laying okay, well, on the ground. Okay, well, gonna, I'm going to sit up and push him up from that because I'm six foot like eight or nine so all right so you get an assist back up to the point where you can get a little better grip on this do you want to try and climb back up to the top yep all right so what i'm gonna have you do is make a series because you're so far down now i'm gonna have you make a series of three athletics checks all right 17 is pretty good you're making some headway six eh, you you don't really lose a lot of ground but you lose some yep okay so the 10 was the first one that came through there uh, the 10 is enough. Between the 17 and the 10, you're able to successfully climb your way up to the platform. Right. Now, Kolvik, if you want to climb your way up to the platform as well, I'm going to have you make... Um, let's have you make a a single athletics check, but do it at disadvantage to just try and jump and grab the rope. All right. I mean, this is 10 feet up. You're, you're essentially trying to dunk. Yep. And guess what? Crossfit half orc mm-hmm. That's yeah what you this get is. some serious thigh power yeah this fucking cross orc okay not too bad 16 16 all right you're able to get onto the rope you shimmy your way up from this point i'm gonna need the same series of three checks you need to succeed on two no disadvantage right you no can disadvantage. do it oh yeah uh, Cole Vic. Cole Vic. <laughs> <laughs> Chew your own name first. Bro. I love it. You're looking down at him. You're like, Roscoe. Roscoe. <laughs> I just look at him like, really? It's one fail. <laughs> 14. Oh, 14. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah no, 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 that's I a success. A pl- I have a plus six to you, athletics. You are athletic as fuck. I yeah, forget. No, so no, that's one I, success. With a failure, I got a one. One success. And then, mm. yeah. 19. All right. Yep. I'm going to have you make the one last roll, mm. and as long as you don't critically fail, then you you're up there. You said two. Well, you needed two successes, but all three rolls have to happen. As long as it's not a critical fail. Uh, 19. Oh, dude. 19. So with you, a 25. Yeah. 
So you get like 26, 25. Roscoe like kind of like huffs a leg over the side of the platform and rolls his way out onto there while uh, while Melvin, Melvin's watching. And then you guys can like you guys can feel the platform like swaying a little bit back and forth as Kolvik is making his way up. He's not even using his legs. Yeah, he's just... and you, yeah, he's just swaying his way up to the top. And then you hear, and he just launches himself upright over the top of, or over the side of the platform and lands on his feet, dusts his hands off, and now all three of you are at the top. I was, I was born to climb, not to rhyme. Oh wait. For I some reason, I don't know why, I, I just decided to uh, just... I want to push you off so bad right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, so you guys are going to look around, I assume? No, we're all up here, like a bunch of jackasses. <laughs> <laughs> On the platform around you, you can see a table, a bed, a couple chests, things like that, as was described earlier. The bed's been made, obviously hasn't been touched in a pretty long time, and there is a a table full of a variety of mysterious and wondrous implements. Um, The main thing that you notice, I was going to have you roll for this, but since there's all three of you up there, you got plenty of time to do this. What you're going to find of interest, first of all, is your eyes are drawn to four little golden idols, pretty little statues. Nothing of magic or importance about them, but definitely worth some cash. I assume you pocket all of those. Mm-hmm. Those go into pockets. Uh, you notice there is a book on the table, and some loose sheets of paper stuffed into it, and a little amulet next to it. Amulet is an emerald on a steel chain. And looking at the book, Melvin, you're the one that goes over there and notices it. And what you see is... What appears to be a journal entry or a series of journal entries in this book. The journal entries are detailing some research on the stars and astronomical, uh, astrological, I guess, would be the right way to put that, observations. And the last lines of this journal are, this is all very fascinating. I'm just going to step downstairs real quick to grab a bite to eat. And that's the last thing in the journal. The amulet itself, you can feel a faint magical aura with this. Again, I was going to have you roll for this, but since you've actually taken the spell Levitate for today, you can feel a very similar aura coming from this amulet. And the amulet is, in fact, an amulet of levitation. Mm. Mm. Piecing this all together, humorously enough, what you can perceive is that there is a wizard with an amulet of levitation that built this very high tower to live in, and one day forgot to put on his amulet as he stepped off the ledge and fell down to his doom. Oh, sucker. Oh, man. <laughs> Much to your benefit, because now you have available to you a bunch of little golden statues, four to be precise, worth about 750 gold each, and an amulet of levitation. So, this amulet, how does it work? Is it always, if you put it on, you levitate? That's amazing that you asked. And here is where I'm going to have you make a. Let's have you make a investigation roll. Investigation. An investigation roll. Come up with... You fucking suck at rolling dice. Four plus four, uh, total of eight. Anybody else want to try? Uh, I was, I'm just going to look over. I would love to try, but... Um, I'll try. Roscoe, yeah, you best. All right, so you guys are all rifling through the table. Roscoe, go ahead and roll. Let's see if you guys can... That's a 23. 23. <laughs> So, Roscoe, you find a sheet of paper that is on this table, and it's got a picture of the amulet on it, and you find that there is a, uh, it's some writing on it, but you don't quite understand. You pass that over to Melvin, and on this sheet of paper, you find the command word that activates this amulet. Is it plube? (laughs) It should be. Oh, good lord, it should be. It's an ancient word that I can't pronounce, we'll put it that way. Plumbus. 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 Um, so you, I'll have you make an arcana check at this point. Checks are my specialty. They really are, aren't they? Eight, uh, so this is, uh, eight plus seven. So, at least you've got a plus seven to help you out there. What you can tell from this amulet, and you spend some time hanging out up there, you're kind of messing with it as the, uh, as your other two compatriots are fucking around on the platform. 
you discover that this amulet through your magical probing uh, allows you to levitate for up to 60 seconds up to twice per day hmm. how far can i levitate there is no restriction on distance or height or anything else it's just 60 seconds worth of levitation I think you should use all 60 seconds to go straight up in the air. Right? <laughs> and shoot up like an ejaculate into space. A celestial ejaculate. <laughs> so that it's basically like 60 seconds of flying then? Pretty much. That's pretty cool. Uh, your speed, by the way, while levitating is your movement speed. Okay. And it is whoever said these words, right? Yeah, there's a single command word that activates one of the charges. And those charges replenish every 24 hours. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask him. What did you find? So if I was hasted at the time, then I would have double flying speed as well. Uh, no, it's just your regular movement speed. Oh, you wouldn't mm -hmm. be able. Hasting doesn't affect the amulet's ability. Okay, but I still have the question mark. What did you find? What is this? Uh, this is jewelry. No, I found the sweet amulet. I'm pretty sure, according to Rasco, it helps me levitate, and. When I say plube, I can fly for 60 seconds. <laughs> well, who gets it? I guess, you know, just the magical wizard should probably... Are you sure? I mean, I get, get the athletics. I mean, I'm pretty... pretty. I can jump high. Why do you get it? Because I'm magic wizard person. And, like, it's... How about he holds it and whoever needs it? Yeah. Okay. And then I can levitate you if you want. You can just ask. Does it work on other people, or is it just the person holding it? Uh, this amulet of levitation, you know, I didn't actually determine this in advance. We're going to say that this thing can move up to 200 pounds. Of who holds it, the amulet itself? It can move 200 pounds. So the person wielding it, wielding who is, who okay, is directing it, and yep. then... Their weight, well, 200 yeah. pounds minus their weight. Whoever they throw it to and you can put it on and levitate, right? So, okay. Okay, yeah. but if I need it, give it to me. Okay. Conflict, tension. <clears throat> what else we got? Is that it? You search around, you find these little golden idols uh, that are worth quite a bit of chunk of cash. Quite a chunk of cash. Uh, and you find this amulet. You search through the papers, the journals, the diaries, all the other stuff that's up there. You don't find anything of any real worth. This wizard was a real piece of shit. Uh, yep, just have it levitate. Pretty poor wizard. All right, Melvin. Can you get us down from here with the sweet, sweet amulet? I can get me down. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a rope here for you guys, so there you go. Mm-hmm. As I my, want levitate, you. my levitate spell is yeah. probably still, I don't know, it lasts for 10 minutes. Yeah, so you can still hover, I guess, I don't know, I mean, you can hover 20 feet in one direction, but I'd, are you restricted on how far down you can go? Um, like, would you just drop until you're 20 feet from the ground? Well, I mean, it's, I don't know. Yeah. Can you tell me how the levitate spell works, it says? I'll shimmy down the rope, I don't care. I'll drop Yeah, same the... here. Yep. But dropping the last ten feet, but that's something he, that uh, you guys can do with ease. As he floats down by himself, I'm just gonna watch him go down. Hmm. It says I can change a target's altitude by twenty feet in either direction. If I am the target, I can move up or down as part of my move. The nice thing about it is you can say when the spell ends, the target floats gently to the ground if it is still aloft. Yeah. So, so it's the target is not who just wears it. No, oh, this, this is this for is his spell. spell. So oh, I have I'm a sorry. Spell. I thought it was whoever wearing the amulet kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, no, this is for the levitate spell he cast earlier. Just to get over to the platform. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So you've got enough time on that, we'll say, that you could just, like, hop off the edge and float gently to the ground. That's what I'm going to do. All right. You gently float to the ground. Kolvik, Roscoe, you guys shimmy down to the ground. And fuck you, tower. That's about all you need here. Anything else you'd like to do before you take off? No. What about those poor corpses? We could yeah. burn them. I mean, we searched them, but... Should we... You want to burn the whole tower? Yeah, why not? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it'll it. serve several purposes. Mm -hmm. It'll mm -hmm. like, kind of respectfully get rid yep. of those bodies. We could also... And plus burning things. Can't we just own this tower now? We could, I suppose. What are we going to do with it? 
I don't know. Rent it like, out. What are the rules for rent owning? it out? Well, no, no. I think it's actually <laughs> it's not a bad idea. We have that rope there, so we can like jump up and climb up it and hold it up, whatever we need. Let's just lock it or do some sort of force field on yeah, it. Yeah, we can make we can lock it. Now it's our tower. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we can retcon that, and we'll say when you uh, we'll say when you search through the wizard, you found the front door key. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, Where our this. bodies now too. Is there any way we can special? <laughs> <laughs> how how secure is this lock? I mean, nobody can pick it, or uh... I mean, it's a lock. It's not an unbreakable. <sighs> is there any way we can? We don't have anything else. Just so. let them pick it. There's nothing value in here. True. Right? Yep. I mean, if we come back and somebody's in our tower, they'll pay the price. Good call. Okay. Or you could add to your corpse collection. They might fall to their death too. Mm-hmm. Yep. Hopefully they do. Yep. <laughs> Put something like a shiny light up there so they go up there like, ah. Nice. <laughs> I just, we come back every once in a while and just collect the loot from the dead bodies. <laughs> like a, the Venus fly tower. <laughs> I was thinking like a fucking. I like that. Like, Minecraft, where they've got the, the various things where, like, you know, it spawns zombies and they go up and fall to their death. I haven't played Minecraft in a long time, but I'm pretty sure that's still a thing. Eh. Are the kids these days still playing Minecraft? <laughs> Anywho. All right, guys. So well, you, another 750. You have buckaroos. 4x 750. Oh, really? Yeah. Total of 3,000 from this Woo. adventure, plus your amulet of levitation. All right. Because there was four golden good idols. day. We're up to eight thousand monies. It's a good chunk of monies. Uh, no I like right. money. I like money. You don't like money like I like money. But we are far from twenty thousand. We need uh... Yeah, but we're getting into a space where we can negotiate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Fuck yeah. So speaking of money, one of the other things that I wanted to bring up for you guys is the dragon parts. I like money. You guys had made a couple of items of clothing and apparel and armor, etc. out of them, but you've got, you've got leftovers at this point. Like, if you had something that you think you could make out of it, or if you had another suggestion or idea, we could certainly do that. Otherwise, you guys can try and get rid of these, because just as like a, you know, random miscellaneous dragon viscera like that's yeah, still worth something do you guys want to just yep. offload this or do you do you have anything else that you're thinking about i have all my uses done with it so i can be all for offloading it yeah we can offload it i'm gonna keep a piece maybe make a pug or a slammer out of a oh, tooth nice. perhaps dragon dragon slammer of some sort we <laughs> used the jaw to make an ornament for the wall didn't we yes we did mm-hmm yeah, and we'll say that it's been a handful of days here, enough time that you've got that big dragon jawbone hanging on the wall. You would have the upper teeth, though, that would not be used in that if you wanted to make slammers out of that. Maybe I could make daggers with his teeth. Ooh. How cool Ooh. would that be? Pretty sweet. That, that would be, be... be hard to make a sheath for it, but I think, the two, I think it'd be worth it. I think twin daggers. Twin dragon incisor daggers? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Is that, that, that what those are called? The the two the mm -hmm. fangs? Yeah. Incisors. I'll have Incisors. to think about that for a little bit. See what that's going to be. Uh, how that will work in the game. What the damage dice, etc. would be. Right on. So put a uh, dragon tooth in your inventory. And then uh, I'll work on dragon daggers for you. So you guys are hanging around in the shop one day. And... Uh, Something, you're all, you're something's going to happen. I know it. <laughs> something's going to happen to us. Well, it's not. This isn't a big one yet. Whoa! But uh, Plube, your old buddy Plube. Uh, Plube. <laughs> the Plubster. <laughs> the Plube. <laughs> the Plubarama. <laughs> Plubowski. <laughs> Plubowski. <laughs> Plube stops by, and you guys like you know you give him the full round of nicknames, and he's giving you finger guns. Like, hey, like, shaving my Plube. <laughs> <laughs> oh you guys God. have a good round of laughter about that uh and Plube's like so guys guys uh word got around town that you guys have a bunch of dragon parts you uh you guys interested in selling maybe he says i am authorized on behalf of my employer to offer you 500 gold for the pile of dragon bits you've got left what do you think mm. fellas 
I don't know. I think we should hold up. I mean, what do we have left to use on this thing? How about a thousand, Ploobster? He says, I got, I, I got a bag of 500 with me. That's all I was authorized. You want me to go back and negotiate? Yes, please. So I think it would be best if you guys came back. Uh, who's uh, Who do you come with? I mean, who's offering gold? Well, he works for... He works for... He, you guys know that he mm -hmm. works for Dunk, and Dunk is the one making this offer. Yeah, we haven't seen Dunk in a while. Well, Dunk also tried fun. to get us killed. We stole all his money. Yeah, we did steal all of his money. Mm -hmm. But we, you, you guys have seen him a bunch of times yeah, in we the Broken Egg since then. He doesn't seem to be harboring any bad feelings that you can tell anyway. Well, he told us that the money would end up back in his place anyway. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I think it'd be who of us to go down and negotiate. I mean, Roscoe has probably some good negotiating skills. Yeah, let's go talk to him. You guys make your way down to the Broken Egg and back to that back business office that Melvin had turned into a skating rink at the end of that adventure. <laughs> Um, you've got all the dragon parts and remainders and whatnot in the in the portable hole still, let's say. Uh, they're, they're getting to be, like, past their expiration, by the way. You've been hanging on to these for a little while. Um, so you, you roll in, and he's like, Hey, my old friends, brought to me by my buddy Plube. I uh, hear you've got some, some dragon uh, mess to offload. We do. Yeah, your boy, the Plubster. <laughs> He said 500. Uh, how about a thousand, Dunk? So, well, I would, I'd want to take a look at it if I'm going to give you more than 500. All right, that's fine. So you guys lay out the portable hole, and he's like, "Wow, this thing's really cool." And he looks down and sees all the, uh, you know, the dragon remnants that are in there. I mean, it's like the upper mouth, basically, <laughs> and like, you know, pieces of the wing that are left over, some good chunks of bone and talon and whatnot. And he, let's see here, what do I got? Uh, so he says he's willing to offer you for what's in this hole 642 gold just for the dragon parts just for the dragon parts he says I don't really have any use for the cleaning stuff right now but I don't know maybe I'll ask around with the uh, the boys and girls in back maybe they could use some but the dragon parts are what I'm interested in today I think you can do a little better you gonna try and persuade him of that yes let's get a roll on and I assume you're persuading, not intimidating or anything. Right. Okay. So this guy's willing to buy dragon parts. I feel mm -hmm. like somebody else is willing to buy dragon parts, too. Still kind of uneasy about him last night. I mean, he tried to get us beat up and killed at one point. He's so not to be trusted. I'm glad we didn't take him back to our place. And I was kind of worried about showing him our cool little uh, portable hole, even. But yeah. you know what? But I really don't want to walk all the way no, back. That... <laughs> <laughs> crocs or no crocs i don't want to walk all the way back no way i was coming over there rasco getting there let's try that again Whoop. Blue. 18 mm. on persuasion he Ooh. is now he kind of like you know hems and haws and all the rest of that fun stuff and let's say he is now willing to give you he says 886 gold that's a fair price, eh? Hey, quick question. Is Plube a free kobold? Or is he like a slave? Yeah, I mean, he's, okay. he's, there are no really slaves within their culture, or at least yeah. not here within this city. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I missed something, and I don't really want to go back to it. <laughs> I, I asked if there are slaves, and Roscoe said, and you said no, and then Roscoe said, yet. <laughs> 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 Uh, I, I knew I was asking because I was curious if Plube was. I'd be curious how much, what the price for Plube was. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted Plube. to buy Plube? Yeah. Plube isn't directly for sale. Yeah. He likes you guys a lot, though. <laughs> yeah. Maybe if you offered him a job, put him on the salary. Yeah, we don't like him that much, but... <laughs> <laughs> You're willing to pay a one-time fee, but not ongoing. <laughs> He's no Perkins, though, but... Plube can be a capital expense, but not operational. <laughs> we, we don't like him enough to give him a job, but if we, to buy him out, right? Yeah, yeah we like. He's a cool dude. <laughs> Microtransactions. <laughs> we look like suckers. <laughs> Plube, go get me a beer. Well, wow. <laughs> oh god.
episode 15, Stupid Tower, was released on February 11th, 2018. You will find us here again next Sunday. We are The Very Good Adventuring Team.